Screen Directors Playhouse stars Eleanor Parker, Hope Emerson, production Caged, director John Cromwell. <laughs> This is the Screen Director's Playhouse, one of the weekly features on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by the makers of Anison for fast relief from the pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. By RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. And by Chesterfield, always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking, plus no unpleasant aftertaste. And that's the biggest plus in cigarette history. Tonight, the Screen Director's Playhouse is pleased to present, transcribed, a story of dramatic conflicts of life in a woman's prison. Our adaptation is the motion picture Caged, starring Eleanor Parker with Hope Emerson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here is Miss Eleanor Parker. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. To fully appreciate Caged, I believe it's vitally important for me to tell you a little about the background. It is not fictional, a creation of the mind, but a shockingly factual story witnessed by Virginia Kellogg, one of Hollywood's most talented writers, who spent months living and gathering this material in a woman's prison. A very courageous woman and a very daring expose. I'm sure you'll find tonight's presentation very exciting and enlightening. Thank you, Eleanor Parker. But before we begin, here's a word from the makers of Anison. When we ask you to try Anison for the relief of pain due to a headache neuritis, or neuralgia, we're not asking you to try a new or unproved method. For there are many people listening in now who have been introduced to Anison tablets by their own dentist or physician. You who have received Anison this way know the effective, incredibly fast relief these tablets bring. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. People by the thousands are using modern Anison today instead of other ways. Doesn't their experience seem worth following? Try Anison the next time you suffer pains from headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. You'll be delighted with the results. Ask your druggist for Anison today. Anison is spelled A N A C I N. <laughs> Here now is the first act of the Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of Caged, starring Eleanor Parker as Marie Allen, with Hope Emerson as Harper. Gather round, folks. Closer. Come on, closer. What I have to say concerns both you and me. Why you? Well, let me tell you a little bit about it. I'm Marie Allen, convict number 93850. Women's state prison, enemy of the people. My story begins as a frightened and bewildered young girl, cooped up in a smelly black mariah, surrounded by hopheads, alcoholics, thieves, and whatnot. We just landed inside the prison gates, and I was gripped by the terrifying impact that I wouldn't see this vibrant world again for a long time. But that was only the beginning. Carol! Roberts, June. Lewis, Millie. Harrison, Georgia. Stark, Eddie. John Smoochie. Marie Allen. Allen Marie, in this cubicle, you tramp. You're new here. I gotta get some information. Yes, matron. 
Court says you're married. Legitimate? Yes. All valuables have to be turned over to us till you hit Freeside. Hand over your wedding ring. Please, it, it means so much. Hand to me. it over. That's better. Mother living, father, brothers, sisters. Well, there's, there's just my mother. She got married again. Nothing like this has ever happened to anybody in the family. In case of death, who do we notify? Death? Oh, Mom, I guess. Belong to any church? Well, we we used to go. It's a, a church on State Street. I forgot its name, I think. In it... for armed robbery, huh? One to 15 years. The judge called me an accessory. I got to get your version of the crime, so shoot. Well, we'd, we'd only been married a couple of months. We tried to find a place to live, but everything cost so much, so... Mom let us move in with her and my stepfather. Well, Tom was always fighting with Gus. That's that's my stepfather. He he tried to find a better job, and then he got Get fired. Get to the crime. Well, when, when Tom drove into that gas station, I stayed in the car while... Then the attendant hit Tom over the head, and I ran out to help him. I guess that's why they called me an accessory. And they took back the $40. Five bucks less, and it wouldn't be a felony. Don't try to kid me. How old are you? Nineteen. I'll skip the mental test. You look normal enough. Lots of them haven't all their marbles. You can take your physical. Where? Infirmary. Your number's 93850. And remember it. Oh, please, please, nurse, I, I feel faint. I'd like some water, please. Just keep your big mouth shut and do as you're told. Come on, now open it wide. No drugs in mouth, teeth strong. Now hold still for blood samples. Oh. Next time you beef, I'll hook the needle. Lung tap sound, heart excited, but strong enough. Stomach. Oh. Now what's eating you? Oh, I, I feel a little sick. Get that way often? Yes, the last week or so. Hey, are you expecting company? Oh, I, I don't know. Another pregnant one. Come on, get up. Do you know who the father is? My husband. Well, ain't we getting respectable? Could he help with the expenses? He's dead. Another bill for the state. All right, get dressed and head for isolation. Isolation? Yeah, yeah, you gotta stay there until the doc examines your blood test. So, for the next two weeks, no mail, no visitors, no nothing. Then, if you're still in your right mind, you'll see the superintendent, Mrs. Benton. <laughs> Come in, Mary. Sit down here, please. Thanks, Mrs. Ben. <laughs> what is it? What's troubling you? Oh, I've, I've been so lonely for the last two weeks. Those, those other women in isolation, the way they talked and the, the awful things they said. And, the, and those matrons always watching, never leaving you alone. <laughs> You'll find all kinds of women in here, just as you would outside. But no prison is a normal place. How soon can I go home? If your record is good, you can come up for parole in ten months. Marie, there's something I must tell you. According to the doctor's report, you're going to have a baby. A, a baby? Yes. You're two months on the way. Oh, but I, I can't have it here. Do I have to have it in here? I know how you feel. But the inmates aren't allowed to go home to have their babies. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Oh, don't worry. Any blood relative can take care of your child until you get out. Then, then my mother will take care of it. But, but they wouldn't let me write her. Can I write her now? Yes, of course. You're an intelligent girl. You know good from bad. Try to keep busy. It's important. Now... As to your work, I'll bet you helped your mother with your father's shirts, didn't you? <laughs> yes. Well, we'll put you in the laundry as a checker. It'll be easier for you because of the baby. You can see me any time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Ben. Marie? Yes, Matron Harper. Uh, come in my room. 
now. Let you and me get acquainted, honey. You may be a number to the others, but not to me. Sit in that chair. It's kind of roomy. Thank you. This is a nice room. Not like a jail. Like the furniture and stuff in here, huh? Just little presents my girls gave me for taking good care of them. Caramel? No, thank you. Cigarettes? No. You know, you're going to find out that a lot of things are tough to get in here. Candy, chocolate bars, cigarettes, perfume. It's a personal service of my own, you understand. On the side, sort of. I like to do good turns for the girls. Why, sometimes on my nights off, I drop in on the family. I could get real news to your husband. He's dead. How about your people? What do they do? My stepfather's a mechanic, but he's not working. I'll bet they saved up for a rainy day. When you think how I can make it easier for you, you being in the delicate condition, so to speak, I can get you anything you want. I can't favor every one of the girls. Time's money to me. I, I see. Mom would be glad to help if she no, could. No, no, eh? Come on. Follow me. We're heading for the big bullpen. Yeah. All right, cut it, girls. Cut the noise. Home, sweet home, Marie. Like the big cage in a zoo, only you clean it up instead of the keepers. Brushing buckets over here. Mrs. Benton said I was going to work in the laundry. I'm boss here. Start scrubbing. But Mrs. Benton told me that... Do as you're told. Where do I begin, Miss Harper? Now you're getting hip. Here, use this lie. The soap's low. Okay, get going. Yes. Didn't you ever scrub a floor? Put your shoulder in it. Now. <laughs> now you're doing okay. Keep it up, and you and me will get along just fine. I'll be back soon. Hey, back to me first. You lied off to Harper. That took spunk. How much time are you pulling? One to fifteen years, but I come up for parole in ten months. <laughs> That's just a hot minute. What's your rap? Robbery. Cafe society yet. <laughs> I'm Kitty Stark. Glad to meet you. Kitty. What's the beef, Georgia? The matron said if I broke another dish, she'd report me. She refuses to believe I never worked in a kitchen. Yeah, yeah, I know. But ain't I told you not to shoot your mouth off the harper about the servants you had and your governesses and the yacht your old man bought you? Why don't you understand? It's always been like that. Even as a child, I had no one to go to. My parents were always away. Even after I was... Take it easy, kid. Take it easy. <laughs> You're new here. What's your name? Marie. Marie Allen. I'm Georgia Harrison. I shouldn't be in here. They said I forged some checks, but it was a mistake. Georgia's class with a capital K. But she married a phony who liked spending other people's dough, and he got her to forge a bunch of rubber checks. Caroline! Come on, Marie. Lay down that brush and wash your hands. Lie burns them to the bone. Yes, they're burning already. Come, Marie. Yes, Miss Harper? What do you think you're doing? Where do you think you're going? Well, it's time for dinner, isn't it? Not for you. I don't like you. Start scrubbing. Cruel, sadistic Matron Harper. As I scrubbed the floor of the bullpen... I remembered something I'd read once. Life is for the living. Well, I wasn't dead yet. And Matron Harper couldn't make me want to die. You've got to fight for things in this world. And I was going to fight all right. To get out of this cage and see that my kid got a decent chance. A better break than I had. Yes. Those were my thoughts as I scrubbed that day. But how was I to know what was going to happen? How was I to know... And 
now, here's a word from RCA Victor. One television set in particular, the RCA Victor Regency, has more to offer than any other receiver available today. That's because the Regency highlights top performance and matches it with beautiful cabinetry. The Regency spotlights quality and combines it with value. Yes, RCA Victor has reason to be proud of the Regency because it's the finest 17-inch television console of them all. Of course, the Regency is million-proof television, proven in well over two million homes, and that alone is your assurance of complete satisfaction. Pictures are clear. Pictures are steady. The Regency is practical. The Regency is beautiful. It's all you've ever wanted in console television. And any RCA Victor television owner can get the RCA Victor factory service contract for expert installation and maintenance. If your set needs attention and you haven't provided for this protection through the RCA factory service contract, simply call the RCA service company branch nearest you. Now, the second act of Caged, starring Eleanor Parker with Hope Emerson. They say you can tell a person by the company he or she keeps. My cellmates, Kitty Stark, lifer, in for murder, the toughest woman I've ever known. Claire, a jewelry fence, an habitual repeater. Smoochy, raised on the streets and hard as nails. Old Millie, sick with arthritis, but a ruthless criminal. June, a repeater, a graduate of nursing school, who only lived for the day she would be paroled. The only decent human being in the bullpen. And Georgia, tall, regal-looking, one step removed from a nervous breakdown. Yes, these were my companions who were preparing me for my return to society. Pile up, you tramp. Time for the call. Lewis, Millie. Roberts, June. Harrison, Georgia. Stop, Kitty. Alan and Marie. Marie Allen, I don't like squealers. Uh, How'd you get word to Benton uh, that you weren't working in the laundry? Uh, I didn't, I didn't, I you're, didn't. You're a liar. Hold it, Harper. You're riding a phony. Stay out of this, Millie. It was me got word to Benton. Yeah? Then I'm going to beat your skull in. <laughs> I wouldn't if I were you. I'm a tall weed in the grass and the grapevine's blooming. Lay a hand on me and I'll put your lights out. I'm in for life. One more like you is so much velvet. Beat it. Well... I ain't got time to argue. Lights out and hit the bumps. <laughs> Thanks, Millie. Forget it, kid. Sleep tight. Oh, who wants to sleep? I want to talk. Hey, why do we talk about men? Now, me, for instance, I always fall in love with a guy who won't work. Last one beat me up and beat it out of town. But I got news for you. Men are important. Personally, I hate to say I'm abolished. If it wasn't for men, we wouldn't be in here smooching. Yeah, you said it. Hey, I'll bet you got some story, too, Marie, huh? Your, your husband in stir? He was killed in the holdup. If he oh. was alive, he'd have another day when you got out anyway. How many jobs you pull when they nab you? I don't want to talk about it, please. <laughs> you will. Cut out the gab. There are people in here who want to sleep. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Down in the south land, hear the train blow, hear the train blow, dear, hear the train blow. Drop me a line, dear, mail it to me. Mail it to me. Marie, listen to me. What's the matter, George? I want to go home. I want to get out of here. Hear the train? People are going home in that train. Oh, easy, Georgia, easy. Doctor, wait for me. Let me on that train. Let me out of here. I don't belong in here. I'm going to Harrison. Harrison. Oh, the 
will quiet her down. Oh, Uncle Liz, Uncle Liz, you've got an artery. <laughs> Maria Allen remarks, six-month pregnancy, blood count low, secondary anemia, complains of backache. Come on, Smoochie. Huh? Marie's by the mangler with Kitty. Let's see what's cooking. Okay. Hey, Marie, I've been watching you. You know, Squillis, I'm going to give you a break. What are you going to do when you flop out of stir? Did you ever figure I'm boosting? Boosting? Hey, she don't even know what a booster is. Boosting, shoplifting, the department store circuit. None of your five and dime stuff like your first rat, kid. We operate on a big scale. The boys will protect you just like your own mother. If they protect you, why are you in here? Because I knocked the guy off. But the syndicate pays me for recruiting so I can take care of Hopper and live easy life. You just leave it to me. I'll see that you get your parole quick. No, I'm not interested. I know it's going through her head. She's been listening to Benton. Rehabilitation, taking cold showers, working for good behavior. When I get out, I'm not coming back. After I'm paroled... Don't I... worry, you won't be paroled. They don't let any con out of stir until the parole officer gets her a job and a place to live. You see, kid, in this cage, you get tough or you get killed. You better wise up before it's too late. How about it? Don't think I'm not grateful, but... But I don't want to get mixed up in anything. I don't think boosting's the only way to get along when I get out of here. I've got to do it my own way. I... Oh, Hey, June. Oh. June, you were the nurse in Freeside. What's the matter with her? Oh, nothing but vitamins and calcium wouldn't help. Smoochie. I'm all right. Huh? I'm all right. Smoochie, tell the nurse I said to go out and get her whatever Marie needs. It's okay. all right. I'm all right. Oh. Marie knows we're taking favors from you, Orlando, Kitty. Ain't you learned nothing. Quit needling her. Well, the only thing important is my baby. If you're old enough to have a kid, you don't need this fix as to stick in her nose in where I don't belong. Quiet. Here's Harper. What's all the gab about? You know the sign reads silence. Uh, tomorrow's... Parole board day, would you find out if my name's on the list? Mrs. Benton promised the moment You're that... on the list, June. Oh. 3.30 today. Benton's office. Be there. Oh, oh thank the Lord. Nice work, kid. Oh. Well, I got some slick new perfume you can have, huh? Let me iron your dress. Try my shoes on. Oh, thanks, girls, thanks. Oh, 3.30. Three hours away. Oh, I'd have gone crazy if I'd told another year... I'll be 30 soon. I'm happy for you, June. Tell me, after you got out the first time, what made you fall back in? Same thing that got me in the first time. A guy. You're lucky. Your man's dead. Don't say that. Your man's dead. He can't turn you into a two-time loser like mine did. Even after I got out the first time, there he was waiting for me. But that's all over with. I'm starting from scratch. Hey, Jack, come on, help me with this mess, will you? I'll quit worrying about you and Marie. Well, the parole board must have left by now. Hey, here she comes. They flop me back. They flop me back. Oh, kid, that's lousy. Here, here, June, lie down on this bunk. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Uh, come on, gang. Uh, how, how about a game of cards, somebody? Not with you, Kitty. I don't like the way you cheat. Who do you call in a crook? Well, look who's coming all dressed up like Astor's horse, Hopper. The guy outside likes the way I look. Just bought himself a brand new car. Must be a truck. <laughs> He's taken me to a show. Tough they flopped you back in, June. We could have double dated with his friend. After the show, he's taken me to his place. Real comfortable, if you know what I mean. Too bad you can't come along, June. You keep your snoot out of our business, will you, Harper? Good night, girl. Pleasant dreams. <laughs> June! June! Harper! Harper! Before you go, you better call Benton. Can't you see June's out in the show, Bob? 
All repeaters act queer when they're flopped back. Pete don't like me to keep him waiting. I'll see you in the morning, girl. <laughs> They've been out for an hour. Hey, Marie, what's eating on you? June. She isn't in her bunk. Well, what of it? I'm worried. Oh, hit your bunk and get some shut eye. No, no, I'm going to find her. Have you seen June, Smoochie? Yeah. Went in the washroom a while ago. Oh, thanks. Dr. Ashton, this is Ruth Benton. I'm sorry to call you at such an hour, but I remember your offer to be a pre-consultant. The prison doctor is drunk and completely useless. It's an emergency. A premature birth brought on by shock. Marie Allen, one of our inmates. Thank you, doctor. What are you blowing your fuse for? Kids have been delivered here before. Yes, I know, Harper, in a filthy infirmary that I have no budget to repaint. Harper? Five inmates swear they advised you June was depressed. And you believe any bull these inmates hand you? I've asked you time and time again to watch changes in the girl's behavior. You mean to tell me you couldn't see that June was acting strangely? With 60 girls in my bullpen, my only job is to see that no one escapes. You helped to kill June just as surely as if you'd hanged her yourself. Will they investigate? I wish somebody cared enough to make an investigation. So, what are you going to do? Suspend me? I'm going to do everything I can to have you fired. <laughs> you gave me three suspensions and you couldn't make one of them stick, remember? But this time I will. So you call the commissioner. So what? I call my friend Thornton Goodrich. He gets the commissioner on the phone and bingo, I'm back on the job again. <laughs> you sit there on your bustle and think you know how to run this place. Do you know how it ought to be run? With a piece of rubber hose. Break them in two if they talk out of turn. Anyone who doesn't toe the mark sits in solitary for one month. Bread and water. One funny move from a girl and I'd clip her hair off of her head. That's the way it used to be run and that's the way it ought to be run. Just like they're a bunch of animals in a cage. <laughs> In a bare, whitewashed, cheerless room, my beautiful baby lay beside me. Looking at him, feeling the softness and the newness of him, I was overcome with a happiness I'd never known. For the moment, everything was forgotten. Time and space were suspended in the wonder of my son. This tiny human being who was all mine. And I lifted my eyes. And my world came apart. For the iron bars and the heavy mesh above the windows only reminded me that I was convict number 93850. Would they allow me to give my child a name? Or would they give him a number two? <laughs> Now, here's a tip for discriminating smokers. Here's Bing Crosby with a word about vacations. Oh, Ken, when you mention vacations, it brings a tear to me eye and a lump in my throat. Poor Uncle Herbert. Well, what happened to your Uncle Herbert? Uncle Herbert loves to fish. So on his vacation, he hired himself off all alone to a secluded spot way back in the woods. 
Poor Uncle Herbert. He uh, forgot his fishing pole? He forgot his Chesterfield. So, friends, take a tip from me. Whether you're packing to take off for the weekend or for that long-anticipated vacation, pack a couple of cartons of those milder Chesterfields. When you take off on a trip like that, you, you like to go where you want and do what you want. So take along the cigarette that gives you what you want. Chesterfield. Chesterfield gives you its famous ABCs. Always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking. Plus, no unpleasant aftertaste. Yep, the country's first and only cigarette taste panel reported. Of all brands tested, only Chesterfield leaves no unpleasant aftertaste. Vacation time, anytime. Take Chesterfields with you. <laughs> You are listening to the Screen Director's Playhouse, one of the weekly features on NBC's All-Star Festival, brought to you by the makers of Anison for fast relief of the pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia, by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television, and by Chesterfield, always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking, plus no unpleasant aftertaste, and that's the biggest plus in cigarette history. The Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of Caged, starring Eleanor Parker with Hope Emerson, will continue in just a moment after a brief pause for station identification. We continue transcribed with the third act of the Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of Caged, starring Eleanor Parker with Hope Emerson in their original roles of Marie Allen and Harper. The paths of glory lead but to the grave. I wonder where the paths of trying to be honest and on the square in a jail leap. Well, you can't help but feel good when someone does you a good turn, like Mrs. Benton removing from my child's birth certificate, place of birth. Yes, this was quite a day for me. My mother was visiting me for the first time, waiting behind the meshed wire. Count off, you tramp! Stop, Millie! Mom! Millie! Marie... Baby, you feeling all right now? I'm okay. How are you? Oh, ailing a bit. I hope you understand about me not writing. I mean, I ain't much of a one on writing. Oh, sure. Isn't it wonderful about your grandson? Yeah, wonderful. I'm going to call him Tommy. Oh, Mom, you're going to love him. Already he's got hair, the same color as Tom's, but but he's got your eyes. I can't take the baby. What? Oh, I want to. What woman my age don't want a grandchild, but your stepfather won't have it in the house. We argued and argued till I was blue in the face. So help me, if I had a dime to my name, I'd walk out on him. No, no, Mom, I listen. I keep figuring how I could take the baby, but I can't leave Gus. I don't know what to do. I just don't know what to do. Oh, Mom, stop crying. Tom's folks are dead, and if you won't take him, they'll put him out for adoption. Oh, what do you want me to do? You've got to leave, Gus. I'll be out of here in three months. I'll get a job and support you. Well, I'm not as young as I was. I tire easy. The doctor says my feet are... Can't you think of anyone but yourself? But it'd be better if someone else took him. Some nice family with money. They could bring him up real nice. I don't want anyone else to have him. My God, my God. There is only flesh and blood. You've got to take him. Keep saying that. Mother, mother, come back here. in the coal bin when the boyfriends call. They'll get the kid a good family. Maybe you'll even get a cut. A baby brings in at least two grand in the black market. Get away from me! Mrs. Benton! Mrs. Benton! Mrs. Benton, don't let them 
take my baby away. Please don't let them take my baby away. You said you'd help me if I ever needed help. Well, I need it now. Haven't you got a friend? Anyone at all who, who just take care of my son until my parole comes through? It's, it's only three months. Then I can have him when I get out. Oh, Marie, believe me, if there were anything I could do for you. Oh, please, Mrs. Bingham, If I could please. take him myself, but I'm not allowed to. You're the only one I can turn to. We haven't any choice. You're a state charge. It's the law. Don't you think I want girls like you to keep your babies? To have them cared for and to... Try and listen to what I'm saying. Those are just words. And I'm sick of words. I had a friend. The only good person I met in here, June. She was flopped back when she should have been given free side. She's dead. But I guess you couldn't help that either. That was a law, too. Someday you're going to find out that most people in Freeside wouldn't hand you a job cleaning out a pig pen. Now, if you listen to me and see my connection... You're wasting your breath, Kitty. <laughs> I'll say. What do you want, Harper? Read it and weep. Vice Queen enters state prison today. Ellie Powell refuses to testify. If I were you, Marie, I'd get friendly with Ellie. I'm not interested. Yeah, you stay out of this. Just as long as I'm paying you, Harper, look out for my end. Them days are over. I'm not interested in penny ante stuff anymore. I'm working with Ellie from here on in. You know, Harper, someday I'm going to get my hands in your hair and I'm going to pull it right out by the roots. Tough, aren't you, Kitty? Tough enough to rip your head off, Elvira. Oh, that's a fine way to greet a friend, isn't it, Harper? Friend? That's a laugh, Ellie. <laughs> <laughs> Kitty Gimpy Sullivan says you're drumming up shoplifters from the inside. I got a concession. No more. While I'm in, I want no kibitzing from you. <laughs> Gather round, girls. I got some presents for you. <laughs> Lipstick. Here, scramble for them. <laughs> Say you, Blondie. What's your name? Marie. Marie Allen. Why aren't you diving for the lipsticks? I like my lips natural. Oh, pretty, aren't you? Here, I got something special for you. A rhinestone compact. Rhinestones are phony. You can have real ones when you change your type. Look, I'm a big girl, and this isn't my first year away from home. If I said no to Kitty, I'm sure not going to say yes to you. Keep your compact. I don't want any favors. Take it, Marie. But I don't want it. When Ellie Powell tells you to do something, do it. A real ball of fire. <laughs> the boys are going to like her. Lay off, Ellie. She's my pigeon. Did you hear what she said, Harper? What are you going to do about it? What do you think? Line up for the count, you tramp. Oh, just the same. I know. Who is? Millie. Joan Smoochie. Stop, Kitty. Kitty, I'm going to take you. I've been wanting to for a long time. How do you think you're going to like two weeks of solitary? Wait a minute. Don't you... take a step or I'll bash your head in with this club. Marie Allen, three o'clock tomorrow. Benton's office. Parole hearing. Please, repeat that again. You heard me. Not that it'll do you any good. If I were you, I'd play ball with Ellie Powell. You'll make the grade sooner. This is Marie Allen, gentlemen. How do you do? Have a seat, young lady. Marie, we have to decide whether nine months has taught you that robbing people at the point of a gun... Oh, I never wanted to, but my husband wouldn't listen to reason, and I, I, I couldn't leave him. I loved him. Mm-hmm. Uh, what type of work can you do? Well... Speak up. I, I could be a sales girl or, or wait tables, uh, work in a laundry. After all the experience I've had uh, here... Please I... try to make your answers brief. This report states your stepfather refuses to have you in his home. Where would you live if parole? Well, where would you live? With relatives? Yes, with my Aunt Rose and Uncle Harry. They're very respectable. Uncle Harry's a gateman for one of the biggest factories. They're very fond of me. If they're so fond of you, why didn't they take your child? Well, a baby would have been a lot of trouble. I wouldn't be. We'll investigate them. Maybe, maybe it'd be better if I lived alone. Any place the parole officer found... Out of the question. 
He must make certain you have beneficial surroundings and guidance. You're hardly more than a child, only 19. A girl grows old here before her time. Marie's been married. She's seen her husband killed. She's born a baby here in prison. She's had the baby taken away from her by law. How can anyone be called young who's lived through such experiences? I've lived a lifetime and a year in this cage. And if I have to fall back in, I'll be like the others. And I'm not like them. Oh, please. Please just give me a chance to prove it. I, I've i paid my debt. Let me out, please. Easy, Marie. You'll Take never it regret easy. it. I promise you. Are. Marie. Marie. After careful consideration, at your age, with no favorable home conditions and no beneficial influences on the outside... We feel that ten months is too short a time to prepare you for your responsibilities outside. Parole is not granted. We we'll review your case in a few months, and you will hear from us. Parole is not granted. With no favorable... A few months, and you'll hear from us. A few months. A few months. Just like June. Oh, only she didn't live a few more months. I've got to get out of here. Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! live kitten you got. Yeah, poor thing was almost frozen. I found him out in the yard. You're going to keep him? It's against regulations. Yes, I'm going to keep him. Uh, you'd think a cat that had more sense than want to come roll in here. Hey, Harper's going to pitch a doozy if she finds it. I don't care. Taking care of somebody makes you feel like somebody. You going to stir nuts, Marie? Oh, this beautiful kitten needs someone to mind him. Someone to look after him. Watch him go. Okay, pile up, you tramp. Okay, where is it? Hand it over, Marie. No, I won't. No one in the world's gonna take this kitten away from me. Hand it over. Get away from me. I'll kill you if you come near me. I'll slap your head in. I'll kill you. Oh, I'll kill you. Get your hands off of me. This is one of the most serious offenses that can happen here. I'm taking away all privileges until further notice. My, my kitten. My kitten is dead. I want to know who started this. It was Marie Allen. She attacked me when I tried to take away the cat. Then she tried to escape. Is this true, Marie? Yes. The first time you tried to escape, I gave you the benefit of the doubt. This time you'll have to be disciplined. I'm going to put you in solitary for three days. All I wanted was the kitten. Only three days? Those are my orders. All right. Let's get going, Marie. Matron, take her to my room. No, Harper, you're not going to... Shut up and do as I say. All right. Sit her in that chair. Harper, if Benton ever finds... Shut up. Hold her hands behind the chair. No... No! 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 I'm going to clip you balls. Oh. Right to the skull. Oh. Then you can rock in solitary. Oh. Elvira Powell, a go-ahead. Oh, no. Too bad. Tough you couldn't get out tonight. It's New Year's Eve. 
New Year's Eve. Last New Year's Eve, Tom took me to that Chinese place. We wore funny caps and we danced. <laughs> Tom bought me a flower for my hair. My hair. Stop thinking about it. It'll grow back. down here. What am I talking about? The kitten's dead. Go to sleep, baby. We all need sleep. Go to sleep, baby. You can have real stones if you change your type. Get out of here. You're in here because you stole $40. A classy $40. little kid for my racket. No and mine. 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 Let me out of here. Let me out of here. I'll do anything you want. Harper! Harper! Let me out of here. I'll do anything you want. Oh, God. Oh, God. Let me out. Let me out. Please, please, please. <laughs> Good morning, Commissioner. Won't you sit down? The governor's madder than a turkey gobbler. Everyone's on my neck because of what you've done, Mrs. Benton. Aren't you confused? It wasn't I that gave out the ridiculous story to the newspapers that there was immorality in this prison due to my negligence. It was Miss Harper. Well, what's the idea of getting a sore over nothing at all? Well, I suppose a man would call the clipping of a girl's hair nothing at all. Well, you could have talked it over with her instead of flying off the handle. There is no place on my staff for matrons like Evelyn Harper. It's too bad all this had to happen before she was fired. Who said anything about firing her? I can get Harper to take back what she said. She can uh, call it a mistake, uh, admit that she was a hothead. And I've prepared some directives which we'll announce are to be put into effect immediately. Directives? Yes. In the form of a memo to you. Inmates who have been honor women will no longer be out in subordinate positions on the staff. The proposed plan to allow occasional work outside the prison when merited by selected girls is denied. As well as the proposed plan for education... You don't honestly think I'd consent to that. Why, I'd be betraying every man and woman working to free prisons from methods like yours. To insulate them from the abuses of politicians, cheap politicians. Now, let's not lose our tempers. I came here with the best intentions in the world, hoping to get together with you to let this thing blow all over. But you leave me with no alternative except to ask for your resignation. Then I'll demand a public hearing. The state allows me such a hearing, and you know it. Let the public learn how the prison is run. Fire me, Commissioner. I insist on it. I want the public hearing. <laughs> Three days in solitary and a month in the infirmary gives you plenty of time to think about a lot of things. Kitty Stark in a bed on the other side of the room. Once the woman of stone suddenly crumbled. A defeated Khan, the victim of Harper's cruelty. The darkness and dampness and coldness of a slimy solitary. The blank stare in her eyes, not recognizing and the nervous tick of her face muscles. Was that my future? If I remained honest and didn't play Elvira Powell's game? Then back to normal prison life. Only it wasn't normal. The girls had reached the point of trigger tension. Harper's cruelty had brought us all to the stage of animal anger, and there was a feeling that at any minute all hell could break loose. Okay, you cramped. Start eating. Well, what are you waiting for? Who are you staring at, Marie? You, Harper. You're looking for another haircut? Kitty? Stark, why don't you answer me? Answer me, I said. Leave her alone. Ain't you done enough to her? Shut up, you old dingbat. Kitty, if you can't hold that fork properly, get back to the bullpen. Hold that fork right, I said. Oh, I'll hold it. Right. 
Right in your heart! Kindly omit flowers. I keep thinking of Kitty sitting in the death house and I get the shakes. Well, take it easy before you blow it too, pal. I didn't know what kind of a heel hopper was. Quit shaking the tambourine. Okay. I see you're still carrying my rhinestone compact around, Marie. When are you trading it in for the real McCoy? I'm not. I'll bet you a pack of weeds you'll still be pulling dead time next Christmas. Paul's giving it to you straight, Marie. Ain't you played the honest John too long? You can still get out of here. But you haven't got much time. I'm being sprung tomorrow. Listen to her, honey. What do you want her to do? Send you an engraved invitation. Want me to answer for you, Mary? Keep your trap shut, Millie, you old crow. Mary, these bird brains giving you a spiel what to do out in Freeside hands me a laugh. <laughs> Before you get any bright ideas, listen to me. Well, I got a file as long as your arm. I was queen of the con women when Powell was wearing diapers. There's nothing I ain't done, including murder. Well, I had a first time like you, dearie. But I can't remember how long ago. <laughs> then the second rap, then the third. Now I'm a lifer. I'll be 71 soon. And you know what I think? Nobody got cheated but me. Forty years taken away. So I'm giving it to you straight, kid. Wait a year on dead time, but get a legit job slinging hash. Then, then get a good guy. Have a kid. Oh, oh, what I'd give for a sink full of dirty dishes. Thanks, Millie. But I'm not sticking around. Paul, I'm trading in this phony rhinestone compact. I figured you would. You've got class. The boys will talk to the parole board. You'll be out by tomorrow. <laughs> So you made it, Marie. In a hurry to check me out, Matron. Nine three eight five zero. Checking out. <laughs> Guess you want your wedding ring back, don't you? Keep it for a souvenir. I'm interested in diamonds, and thanks for the haircut. Marie, I'd like to talk to you. What about Miss Benton? Now that you're leaving, let's not lie to each other. What do you mean? Cashier's job you've gotten is just a blind. The parole officer okayed it, didn't she? Elvira Powell has a lot of friends. In a couple of more months, the parole officer could have found you work. You'd have made some honest money. Had self-respect and decency. Where'd those things ever get me? Why do you give up? Now that you don't need to, when you're free. Free for what? To go to my baby. To sit down on a turkey dinner with a family. To kiss my husband. From now on, what's in it for me is all that matters. You did your best, and where did it land you? You can't lick the system. Marie... If you ever need any help... Thanks, but I won't. For that 40 bucks Tom and I heisted, I certainly got myself an education. Here's the address of the parole officer, Marie. Goodbye. Good luck. So long. Front gate. 93850. Coming out. Miss Benton, what'll I do with her file? Keep it active. She'll be back. I'll be back, all right. And so will many, many more like me. First-timers who graduate into second and third, and I don't know how many times. Do you know who's to blame? You. 
All of you out there. The crime in the beginning was all ours. But now you're to blame for refusing to open your eyes. For refusing to see. For refusing to lift your hands. For refusing to take time to investigate and do something about it. Yes. We judge you guilty. Guilty. Thank you, Eleanor Parker and Hope Emerson, for an excellent performance. Our stars will return in just a moment. Next week, the Screen Director's Playhouse will again present another great motion picture story. Our adaptation will be Wuthering Heights, and our stars will be Dorothy McGuire and James and Pamela Mason. And now, here again are tonight's stars, Eleanor Parker and Hope Emerson. I believe I speak for both Hope and myself when I say that an actress is extremely lucky to have the roles we did in Caged, and more than extremely lucky to have a director as imaginative and creative as John Cromwell to guide us. How right you are. Without a good director, a performer is sort of like a ship without a rudder. (laughs) Well, I'm glad that you both feel that way about Mr. Cromwell. Being a director myself, you understand. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, may I present Mr. Al Rogel, president of Screen Directors Incorporated, one of the best directors in this town, and, well, about the nicest guy you'd like to invite into your living room. Thanks, Eleanor. Uh, I I want to say this about you and Hope. Watching true artists at work is very exciting, and... I'm excited enough right now to tell you truthfully, you were both magnificent. And I'm sure that if John Cromwell were able to be here tonight, he would agree that you both gave your usual Academy Award performance. Well, those are sure kind words. And from the bottom of our hearts, we thank you. And for the Screen Director's Playhouse, I'd like to extend a hearty invitation for you and Hope to come back again real soon. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone. Caged was presented through the courtesy of Warner Brothers, producers of the Technicolor adventure drama Captain Horatio Hornblower, starring Gregory Peck and Virginia Mayo. Included in tonight's cast were Monty Margett, Gene Bates, Gigi Pearson, Virginia Gregg, Irene Winston, Peggy Weber, Betty Blythe, Grace Lenard, Eleanor Audley, and Byron Kane. Caged was adapted for radio by Jack Rubin. Screen Director's Playhouse is under the production supervision of Howard Wiley. It is directed by Bill Karn. Portions of tonight's broadcast were transcribed. This is Jimmy Wallington speaking and inviting you to listen again next week to Screen Director's Playhouse when we present Wuthering Heights, starring Dorothy McGuire and James and Pamela Mason. Tomorrow, hear Backstage Wife on NBC.